Hello, welcome to our Thursday Business News Report. It's now time to bring a feature on the show today as we focus on the banking sector. Financial institutions have been issued a new directive by the Central Bank of Nigeria as the Apex Bank extends its clampdown on bad debtors beyond deposit money banks. The CBN directed other financial institutions to implement the credit risk management system to forestall the threat of bad debtors to the financial system in the country. Now, the decision was taken as non-performing loans increase in the banking sector following the COVID-19 pandemic. The non-performing loans had risen to 6.3% as of March 2021, staying above the 5% prudential requirement of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Part of the implementation will compel development finance institutions, microfinance banks, primary mortgage banks and other financial institutions to report all credit facilities, including principal and interest, to the CRMs. They are also expected to update the system on a monthly basis as the financial regulator will monitor the exercise to ensure compliance. The CBN is introducing the system due to its success in commercial banks over the years and much more. Joining me now via Skype to discuss this development and much more, I have Olusha Guelemo, Public Finance and Policy Analyst. Good to have you on The Breakfast Show this morning. Thank you for having me. Now, the need to prevent predatory borrowers from undermining the banking system is critical. Likewise, also meeting the non-performing loan rate that the CBN is projecting at 5%. We're still about 6.3%. Not so bad, but going by the current economic climb that we have going on, do you think this clampdown is a harsh move, understanding that businesses are barely surviving and cannot necessarily pay back their loans in good time? Yeah, thank you for that question. I, I think we, we would ordinarily we uh, think that it is harsh uh, because on one side, we're just uh, coming from the coming out from the pandemic and, you know, the vaccination is still, the rollout is still, uh, you know, graduating. And then on the other side is that uh, during the pandemic, the Nigerian economy went into recession and recovery uh, in that area is, you know, is slowly moving. Uh, so we think it's harsh, uh, you know, uh, with those parameters. But this is one uh, key reform that, uh, you know, should actually have been put in place pre-pandemic. And... I, I want to really, uh, you know, congratulate CBN uh, for putting this in place now, uh, irrespective of what the state of the economy and the state of, uh, you know, businesses are today. Uh, mm. It is important that we know what is going on in terms of credit facilities, whether to corporate entities or individuals. Uh, and I think uh, putting the credit risk management system in place now uh, will put a stop to you know, having borrowers, uh, uh, you know, moving from one Bank uh, to the you know, other. lender to another mm -hmm. without, without uh, you know, any, any uh, you know, database to support what, what they are owing, mm. actually. And this also alludes to the uh, bank verification number as well as the national identification uh, numbers as well that we are having coming into bear using data to uh, sanitize the market. Your thoughts on these developments? I think that's fantastic. When, when CBN, government agencies or, or independent institutions of government, or when, when they do things properly, it is important to commend them. And, you know, we had, we had, we had uh, of course, you know, spoken about, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the ban on cryptocurrency by, by central bank and all that. But with regards to the, you know, CRMS now, it's a good move. And then putting BVN behind it and tax identification number, it's fantastic. So that we will then have, you know, unique identif identification for all the borrowers, you know, uh, where they are, who they are, and then we know what it is they are owing. And, you know, the truth is, for instance, when you look at Q3 2020, you know, NPL, for instance, had risen to about 1.1 trillion, which you said earlier is, is about 6.3%. Uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge jump when you look at the entire credit uh, uh, facility that has gone out from, you know, financial institutions. And oil and gas alone, you know, representing about 11.3%. It, it, it appears that this idea that we are stuck with oil and financial institutions need to do the hard work. 
and that's why you know fintech uh, is moving fast and you know they're doing you know so much competition now with you know the the uh, dfis and you know uh you know uh, and fintech mm. but what i believe is that financial institutions need to do the hard work not just you know lending money to you know oil oil uh, you know oil and gas operators and just you know you know are putting your you know finances in high risk ventures and that's what has led to this issue of having high rates of or high ratio of non performing loans and other things that i believe may have also contributed to you know npa ratio going up and going up is this issue of you know interest rate and what we've also said to cbn is that we, we need to do something about the interest rate we also need to look at gdp for instance you know you look at gdp in 2019 and look at it in 2020 there's a downward trend and this will also contribute to you know non performing loans you know rising and then of course uh, this poor credit appraiser, and I believe that you know the, this credit risk management system now will now provide the opportunity to appraise you know the credit facilities that has gone out to people. Then also the issue about inflation at 17 percent. Then of course unemployment now at 3 percent. Uh, and uh, you see all of these things are issues that contribute to non-performing loans, and we need to look at it holistically and see how to address it. Do you think we're going to have a further spike uh, by year end 2021 in terms of non-performing loan rates or you think we are gradually going to inch closer to the 5% threshold on the back of vaccine uh, deployment and also recovery in the markets? Things are gradually looking up going back to pre-pandemic levels. Do you think we'll have a dip or a spike? I think that if we are able to you know, uh, increase vaccine rollout, uh, particularly in Nigeria, and then we also, you know, the government is able to, you know, cushion the effect of fiscal pressure uh, on the economy, and then CBN, like it said, is able to monitor uh, compliance with uh, disclosures to the CRMS. I think there may be, a, there may be, a, you know, uh, there might be a downward, you know, trend, and then perhaps maybe come to that threshold of five percent that CBN said. But if uh, even if vaccine, you know, uh, rollout increases and the government is able to provide fiscal uh, stimulus and, and all of that to businesses, but CPN does not monitor and ensure compliance, you know, with disclosures by financial institutions, then we we'll still have a situation where the system is short-chained and, uh, you know, financial institutions will continue to lend money out, uh, you know, to high-risk ventures. Uh, thereby, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, scaling up, you know, non-performing loans, and it's not good, you know, for the banking sector. And let's also wrap our conversation now. We have uh, members of uh, the society who uh, who uh, categorize among the uh, higher cadre in terms of. Uh, the volume of investments they have access to, and then the volume of loans they also require. Now, at the end of the day, there still remains some sort of uh, electric fish uh, phenomenon, eel phenomenon, where you cannot necessarily pin them down in terms of repayment of loans, areas around tax evasion, and much more. Now, these are revenue leakages that the government has to deal with. These are leakages that our financial institutions have to deal with. The bigger economy at large has to deal with this money. What do you think we should be doing right as well going forward beyond the uh, BVN checkmating and regulatory uh, efforts? Well, I think that all um, you know, relevant government institutions need to work hand in hand. And I believe that the CRMS now, for instance, will provide, provide you know, that unified uh, you know, access to all key government agencies to be able to monitor tax remittance, monitor you know uh, loan repayment, monitor credit you know uh, facilities going out and all of that, and then also uh, for me it's also that uh, the key stakeholders in in the in the in the financial services sector you know are able to access you know relevant data that you know you know whether in terms of recovery uh, debt or you know monitoring tax uh, remittance or all of these things and i believe that the crms will be a very good tool infrastructure to 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 enabling that uh, but it is important to state that of all the non performing loans we need to know how much of these loans have gone to or where where maybe the the whole credit facilities has gone out how much of this credit facility has gone to msmes mm. because that is what we need to focus on if you really need to grow the economy if we are just focusing on you know, uh, operators in the oil and gas uh, sector, 
and we're not looking at MSMEs and putting and uh, uh, providing credit facilities to them, I think uh, it doesn't show uh, you know much seriousness on our part and of course on the part of the regulatory agency, which is the central bank. Definitely, MSMEs remain the engine of growth, and if we want to take our recovery seriously, we have to invest as much as possible and also see increased level of access to credit within that sector of the economy and, and also looking at emerging sectors as well. We just have to uh, assist as much as possible and also ensure that we have credit facilities reach them because that's the core of the economy and we must get things right. Thank you very much for your time on The Breakfast Show this morning. Olusha Goelemo, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for having me.